All right. Uh, you can tell from my appearance. Um, it's literally right after I finished uh, season six that I'm recording this. Um, I needed to watch the next episode. I'm probably going to finish uh, the next season pretty quick here. Um, but man, I just I just had to keep going. Like, man, we're, we're at such a critical point. Not necessarily in terms of like plot or anything, but just in terms of like Don's character and like, is he going to continue to make the same mistakes he's been making or is he going to change his life? Um, and I really needed to know how we handled that. Um, so this episode, this first episode of season seven, Time Zones, um, we open it with Don going to California um, to go visit with uh, Megan, uh, who's moved out there to be in, during Hollywood. But he's still living in New York, even though he, um, like, is not working. He's been suspended, so there's no reason why he can't go out there to California. Um, we learned in this episode that he actually is working, sort of. He's, like, giving the ideas to Freddie Rumson, who's freelancing for Sterling Cooper. So it's like he's still working there secretly. Um and uh yeah i mean that's funny but um it does speak to don's character of like i i just think i don't think he can admit to megan what he got like you know suspended from his work and i think he wants to be there even though he physically can't right now you know um so he's dealing with all of that uh there's this deep underlying tension between him and megan where it's almost like they're strangers now, uh, which is really sad to see because she was such a warm and open hearted person. Um, but Dawn's just so closed off and so, um, you know, keeping her at a distance there. So, you know, it, it is what it is. Like he he connects with this stranger, but he doesn't sleep with her. Like that was well, I don't know if we'll run into her again, but while he's flying back, he uh, is sitting next to this woman, and you think it's like the typical Don Draper thing, where it's like every single woman he meets is like you know, uh, but he actually doesn't. Um, but they they do have this kind of honest moment between the two, where he's like, yeah, she knows I'm a shitty husband, uh, so <laughs> we'll have to see um, if again if he's gonna change or I mean he's probably not gonna change. Let's let's be real, it's Don Draper. Uh, we have that going on. Uh, meanwhile, we've got some stuff back in New York. They have a new, basically, person in charge of creative in the New York office um, to replace Don while he's gone. He's a hack, though. You know, he's he's just kind of mediocre. Um, and Peggy is upset because she's used to pushing for excellence. But since Ted's in California, he doesn't care. Um, and Don's gone. There's no one there to push the team to, like, go way more than um than just settling for the mediocrity so she's upset with that um she sees ted again that upsets her because you know it didn't work out between them um what else what else what else uh we got a storyline with roger and his daughter where the daughter like forgives him and he's in like this weird like i guess uh swinger kind of you know sex thing with uh i think it was that girl he met at the party in new york or in california or maybe it's someone else i don't know but it's one of the hippies and they're like they all having it's like guys and girls all having sex together in a room and sleeping together um it's like he's joined this kind of bohemian cult um it's funny last the last episode last season i i didn't talk about this but joan kind of let him be uh a part of his son's life, but she's still not um, letting him be romantically involved with her. She's kind of being more with, um, with Bob, but she, again, I don't think anyone knows that Bob's gay. So uh, let's see how that they deal with that storyline. Um, but overall, it's a, an interesting start to the season. Um, I'm a little bit sad. I'm, I'm reaching the end here, uh, but I have a feeling it'll be a good season to go out. I don't know. I don't know the reputation of the show. I don't know if they're like, oh, yeah, season seven's garbage or whatever. Um, but for the most part, I felt like every season has been very consistent in terms of quality. There's been a few where I was like, yeah, I'm you know, not that great. Um, but they've been very consistent because they don't really go for like crazy out there twists or, um, 
you know, different plot lines or stuff like that. It's usually just very character driven interactions that um, for the most part uh, have been really satisfying. I mean, I, I really love the first two seasons of the show. Um, I think season four was pretty good. Season five was good. Six was good. Uh, can't remember too much about three, but yeah, there, there's, there's stuff going on all the time that I think is, um, is, uh, it keeps the characters grounded in, in, and believable and makes it, makes them character focused stories. Um, so I think I'll leave it there for now. Um, strong start to the season and we'll see how they continue on from here. But, uh, thanks for watching and we'll check out the next one soon. Hey, what's up everyone? Back with another reaction. Um, this is uh, the second episode of season seven, um, A Day's Work. Um, now, in this episode, uh, which takes place um, around Valentine's weekend, we have a story with Peggy that seems a little stupid. Like, she, she came off particularly dumb um, in this interaction, which I felt was a little bit out of character. But at the same time, I, I do think it's related to what she's going through with Ted. Um, but basically, like, she she sees flowers on her secretary's desk and uh, she thinks it's for her. So she takes them. Um, and then later on, she thinks the flowers are from Ted Shaw and she's very upset about that. Um, and then later, um, she, the secretary tells her that it's, it's her flowers and she gets embarrassed and she wants her off her desk. Um, so again, it seemed kind of dumb for Peggy to like go the whole episode without realizing that it's, you know, the secretary's flowers. Um, but again, at the same time, it, it is, it's a reflection of her feelings for Ted that she's, you know, construing it this way. And it's also, it, it works out in a mechanical sense because, um, the guy, whoever replaced, uh, Don, he gets mad at his secretary for something that wasn't her fault at all. So he wants her off his, her, his desk and, um, Joan puts her in front at the reception, but then um, uh, Cooper is like, we can't have a black girl at reception. Like, it just, it's too public. So they end up swapping around, and then Joan moves upstairs at the end of the episode because she's going to be focusing more on accounts. Um, so I think the implication was that Dawn, the black secretary, is going to take Joan's spot of, like, managing personnel. Um which she did get that responsibility for like the punch cards uh, before. So that's cool to see her moving up a little bit. Um, but you know, that's just how it goes there. Uh, but that's one storyline. Another is with um, Sally. So Sally comes into the city uh, for a funeral and she goes by Dawn's office and she realizes that Dawn's not working there. Um, and then she goes to Dawn's apartment and they kind of get into a little bit of an argument because, uh, you know, he's been lying to her about working there. Um, but then they, they actually sit down for a meal. And um, at the end, you know, she says she loves him because he was honest with her. Again, it was, it's the whole, it reminds me of Meadow and Tony, right? Like she just wanted honesty from her father. Uh, so they end up bonding well. And I think that uh, no matter what happens, you know, Sally's always going to love her father for, you know, just being the the man he is, like flaws and all, like you know, she still appreciates him uh, on some level. So uh, that's a nice little storyline there. Um, and then we also have one with Pete. Like he lands like the dealership association of of GM, and uh, but they but the executives at Sterling Cooper they they want to check with GM first to whether it's okay or not, and they want to go through their existing business. And he feels particularly marginalized, um, you know, ever since the merger, like he's struggled to understand his place at Sterling Cooper. Like he was the main one driving business for a long time, but now they have a lot of people to do that. He's not nearly as important. So um, it's, it's, it gets, it's got some humor with him, you know, he's also banging some real estate agent up there. Um, again, he's found a woman who actually finds him attractive to an extent, finds him important. So, uh, good for him, I guess, <laughs> but you know, he's still fucking Pete. So, um, that's pretty much the storylines for the most part. Uh, 
not too much going on this episode. Some good interactions with Don and and his daughter, but um, I think I'll leave it there. It's gonna be a short little recap. Uh, I'm just gonna keep watching more episodes. So uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one coming soon. Hey, what's up, everyone? Back with another reaction. Just watch the uh, third episode of season seven, Field Trip. Um, now, this episode uh, has two or three storylines happening. Uh, the first is with um, Don. So he goes, so he goes to California to visit Megan because she's not doing well out there in Hollywood. Um, she's kind of nervous, you know. She's losing her confidence. Um, and I think probably a lot of that has to do with the fact that Don's not there with her. Um, and he tells her in this episode that he's been on leave. And so he's been choosing not to be with her. Um, so that's, you know, particularly, uh, sad. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, she feels very hurt by that. It's like, if you could be anywhere, why were you choosing not to be with me? Um, you know, where, where I'm at. And, you know, he says, like, he didn't want to face her being fired like that. Uh, although he wasn't fired, as we, we see. But um, he, you know, he he talks with her and they kind of make it up. But it's it's very clear to me that it's not going to work out with Megan. Like, there's just so much distance between them. I'm like, Don, come on, man. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing with your life, bro? Um, But again, work. He, he's like like the classic guy in the show where it's like work is more important to him than his love life. Uh, but he, he gets a meeting from another company to find work with them instead. Um, then he goes to Roger and Roger's like, no, 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 come back. We'll, we'll take you back. Um, but he doesn't tell everyone else. So he's there all day, basically like, and everyone's like, what's going on? Why is Don Draper here? Um, eventually the partners come in, they have a big debate whether or not they're going to, uh, hire Don or not. Um, and it's, it's also, I think a reflection of what's going on in the industry at this time. It feels like creative, um, you know, advertisements and stuff like that is not really what's pushing the industry more and more now. It's more like numbers and, um, just having a media plan and, and networks and commercials and all this stuff um, versus having like a very, you know, specific, nuanced uh, or really creative idea. And I think that's how it works kind of in marketing today, too. I feel like it's not so much coming up with that incredible thing than it is just kind of putting ads in front of people using like, you know, like cookies and stuff online, like targeted ads and stuff. It's not about having like a really creative message. Um, now you can say that that's probably worse overall. Like the industry has lost some of the artistry that um, it once relied upon. But I think that is symbolic that like guys like Don are not really needed in the current day as much as it is just kind of like a more low level approach. Um, but uh, regardless of that, they eventually decide to let Don back after taking a vote, but there's some rules. So he's not allowed to meet with clients alone. He has to stick to the script, um, not allowed to drink, and he's been demoted. So he's going to um, take uh, uh, Lane's old office, and uh, he's going to report to Lou, the the new creative director they've hired. Um, I do wonder, like, what is... Uh, what's Ted doing out in California? Why is he not the creative director? I think it's implied that he's like taking his, you know, like he's not really paying attention too much to work anymore. He's just trying to focus on his family. So, and I think what's his name alluded to that, um, Cutler. They also said that I, I couldn't quite tell if this is what they were saying, but did they say Harry Crane is gone? Like, did he quit? Um... I don't know. There was a line where they said Harry Crane's gone. Um, I don't. I don't feel like they would write him off that quickly, but I, I don't know. Maybe. Um, but uh, regardless, Don's back, and he just agrees to it right away because he wants to just be back at work. He's tired of doing nothing all the time. Um, but uh, yeah, he does that. Uh, meanwhile, there's another storyline happening with uh, Betty. So she takes uh, Bobby on a field trip, or she chaperones the field trip to a farm. Um, and Bobby 
it's going really well. They're having a great time together. Um, but then Bobby does something where he trades her sandwich to someone else. Um, and she gets all pissed off about that. Kind of disproportionately so. Because I'm like, come on, you're the mom, you know. Like, he made a mistake. But uh, it's, um, you know, it's like, like wh why do you have to be so cold to him? Like, you know, be, you can, like, be like, hey, that wasn't the right thing to do. But, you know, come on, hug your kid. Like, let him feel the warmth from you. But she very actively is kind of holding a grudge against Bobby. And uh, she she says to her husband afterwards, like, why don't they love me? Uh, even though I'm their mom. And it's like, it's it's so clear that Bobby did love her. Like, he was so happy to have her there. It's just she acted very cold to him afterwards and he felt sad. Um, you know, rightfully so. I would feel fucked up about that too, what I did to my mom. But, you know, it's like, it, it's, it's the mom's job to forgive her son and be like, oh, it's okay, son. Like, just don't do it again. Um, that's the way I feel like it would have been healthy to handle it and then inspire more of that love in her child. But, um, again, Betty's kind of childish herself. And when something goes wrong, you know, she still holds a grudge. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with Betty this season. It's, uh, It'll be pretty interesting. But, uh, yeah, for now, that's pretty much the storylines as I see them. Um, yeah, I think it's there's, there's going to be real problems with Megan. Um, we'll see where they go. But, uh, yeah, for now, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next one coming up. Hey, what's up, everyone? Back with another reaction. Um, just watch the... What is this? Four, third or fourth episode of the... Uh, seventh season uh fourth episode um this one is called the monolith um and it deals with uh what happens now that dawn is back in the office so you know he's been let back in but there's all these like rules and stipulations for him uh being there and uh you know one of them is that he has to report to like he's been demoted right he's not the creative director or the only creative director anymore um, he works underneath the other people, including in this case, Peggy, because in this episode, Lou, I think very intentionally gives Peggy, um, control over Dawn. I think very smartly thinking that like, oh, either Dawn will bucket this and make it easier so the partners fire him, um, or, you know, he'll, he'll do the work or whatever. So he, it's win or win for him. Um, and Don does buck underneath this, you know, he, he's, he doesn't like the idea of working for Peggy, um, someone who used to work for him. He's used to being in a position of power and he starts drinking again, even though he's not supposed to at work, gets really drunk. It's close to getting found out. Um, but luckily Freddie Rumson, who, um, is there and who Don was helping this entire time freelance, um, you know, picks him up and gives him a pep talk and is like, you know, you've been given a second chance here. Just go in and do the work, you know, like you're just going to complain and cry. You're going to make the best out of it and, you know, rise back up to the top. So Don decides, you know, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to um, uh, basically do what Peggy wants, be an underling, um, knowing, of course, that, you know, he's going to rise to the top and. I mean, at the end of the day, he's getting a fucking amazing salary and he's a partner there. Um, so even if he's doing grunt level work, he's still getting paid an insane amount for it. So, um, you know, he, he should do it. Uh, and I think he, he comes around to that thinking and becomes appreciative for what he has. Shame he can't do the same for Megan. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll have to deal with that when we get to it. Um, Meanwhile, there's also a storyline happening with uh, Roger. So his daughter runs away to like a hippie compound uh, and she leaves her husband and her baby behind uh, to go be here. And Roger and the mother go down there to confront her. Um, and the mother, you know, doesn't understand it at all. But I think Roger, because he had the LSD experience, is kind of more open to it. So he goes and tries to talk her out of it and actually, you know, spend some time with her. But even he ultimately is like, you have a child, like you can't run away. She kind of points out the hypocrisy of that. The fact that, um, you know, he ran away from, 
his responsibility. Like, he wasn't a father to her, really. Um, so, you know, it's like he's got no... He's a hypocrite. He's got no room to talk on the situation. So, um, ultimately, he leaves her there disappointed in her and himself. You know, it's, it's obviously a reflection of himself, too. Um, but we see that... Uh, yeah, I mean, these it's a it's a spiritual crisis that a lot of these characters are going through including this daughter you know she's looking for something she hasn't found it in in the normal society um and so she's trying to find it here but i think she'll eventually kind of realize yeah it's wrong to leave her kid like that um i'm surprised she didn't take the baby with her but um i think in her, in her heart of heart she probably knows that's no place to raise a kid um but that's that's pretty much the entire episode. Um, not too much going on uh, besides that. But um, we'll have to see. We get a little bit with uh, Pete in in uh, in Los Angeles. He lands again the account that Don and Peggy are working on. Um, we'll have to see again. They, they haven't really done anything out there. Uh, we'll have to see what ends up happening. Um, but I wonder if. What they're going to do with that storyline, because Pete's with this, you know, real estate chick, and they seem pretty happy together, but I can't help but think that he needs, like, he's going to be drawn back into his family, too, because he basically abandoned his family. Um, I mean, Trudy pushed him out, but, you know, it's because he was cheating and just not being attentive at home. It's kind of one of the big recurring things happening throughout this whole thing. So, um, anyway, that's it for this uh, reaction. Um gonna watch another one right now so talk to you after that hey what's up everyone back with the uh fifth fifth episode yep of season seven uh the runaways um now in this episode dawn gets a visit from or he gets a phone call from uh i can't remember what her name is but it's it was the niece of uh anna draper the woman you know his first wife, who wasn't really his wife, it was the woman married to the original Don Draper. But um, she calls him and lets him know that she's not doing well. She's pregnant. She's become a hippie. Um, there, like she's just, she's out of money. Like you know, she's not in a good place. So she asks for help. So Don sends her to meet with um, uh, with Megan because she lives in L.A. and. Megan's supposed to, you know, take care of her. And Don's going to get there the next day. Um, he gets delayed at work uh, by Lou. Um, and while he, while she's while Megan is with uh, the niece alone, um, she basically just kind of tells her like, "Get out of here! <laughs> like, you're here's some money. Just go away." You know, uh, she kind of phrases it like Don uh, is going to want to control her and stuff. But I think Megan just didn't want Don to see this girl. Not, I couldn't quite exactly tell why. Like, it wasn't necessarily that she was jealous of her, at least like, like they had slept together. But it was more so, I think, that, um, she, like, it was almost like she was jealous that Don was, you know, protecting this girl where she, where he's not really doing that for Megan. Um, I, I don't know. It was a little, it felt a little out of character, but Megan felt definitely... Like, it felt like Megan was different this episode. Probably very intentionally so. Because later on in this episode, Megan has, like, a threesome with Dawn. Um, but it doesn't feel like a threesome of love. It feels like she's just kind of going wild out there. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't... She, some, something's up with her. And, you know, I mean, Dawn, from Dawn's perspective, it's probably cool, but... Um, you can't help but wonder, like, hey, what's going on with this? Like, why is this girl acting so uncharacteristic? I mean, she's probably just being corrupted by Los Angeles in general. But, I mean, also just, I, I don't know why, what they're thinking of. Like, I don't know why Dawn just doesn't move out there. Um, but again, whatever. Uh, while he's out there, though, Dawn runs into Harry Crane. At, he, he ends up showing up at the party. And Harry Crane tells him about a plan that Lou and um, Cutler have to land a cigarette company. But if they land the cigarette company, they're going to ha they're going to like fire Don, I guess. I mean, what the reason why is because he wrote that letter condemning cigarettes um, before that. So 
you know, they obviously don't want to work with him and Don doesn't want to get kicked out. So he crashes the meeting and tries to sell himself to this company. Uh, we'll see how they react, though, because remember, they had very strict rules for Don with how he was going to interact with clients. Um, so, yeah, it's a... Uh, It'll be difficult to see, but I think Don will come ahead. You know, he always does. Um, so we'll see how they handle that. I, I didn't know quite, like, can they just get rid of Don? Or were they just going to, like, be like, don't show up to work and just continue to pay him? It probably would have been worth it, like, to just continue to pay him because well, of the billings they would get from cigarettes. Um, and I don't know. If I was Don, I, I would keep taking that salary, man. I'd take that salary and, like... Um, I know he can't work for another ad agency, but he could, you know, write a novel or something. I don't know. Don's creative. He could do some some stuff. I'd, I'd keep taking that. Um, but uh, what else? What else was here? Um, oh, there's also a storyline with uh, Betty and Francis fighting. Bobby wants to run away. You know, it's 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 not a healthy home life for these kids. Um, you know, Sally's got a bunch of attitude. Um but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the entire... Ep oh, I almost forgot the most important part of this episode, which was Michael Ginsburg. Um, he, he's been freaked out ever since they brought in a computer. He thinks it's, like, messing with his brain. Um, he's losing his mind a little bit. He goes over to Peggy's, says he's in love with her, um, says he might be gay. But <laughs> uh, all this stuff kind of adds up. Um, and then at the end of the episode, he fucking cuts off his nipple and, like, gives it to Peggy in a box. Um, and she ends up calling the, uh, the, the loony, you know, the loony bin to him to get, like, you know, psychiatric help. He gets, like, put into, like, strapped down afterwards. Um, and, you know, it's sad to see Michael in that state. Um, I think he's probably, like, schizophrenic or something, you know. He's got some mental issues. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he's right. Maybe computers do all turn us into homos. <laughs> I got one right here. I've got one right here on the desk that's more powerful than the one they had in that office at that time. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe the, maybe I should cut off my own nipple to uh, release <laughs> as a release valve. But um, it was sad to see him in that state, you know. Uh, he's always been kind of a loony guy. Um, I guess it makes sense. He's got some mental issues. I kind of just thought he was eccentric. But, um, yeah, it seemed definitely like he went over the edge when they brought that computer in. And we'll see how they handle it. Uh, but, yeah, for now, that's that's pretty much the episode. Um, we'll see next episode how they deal with what Don did. I think it's going to be probably some drama. So uh, I'm going to watch that right now. We'll talk about it soon. <laughs> Talk to you then. All right, back with the uh, sixth episode of season seven, The Strategy. Um, now, in this one, uh, we have some people from L.A. coming back to New York. So Pete comes back with his girlfriend, the real estate agent, um, and Megan comes back too. And during this episode... They discuss strategy for the Burger Chef restaurant chain that they, they are getting as a maybe a potential customer. Um, and Peggy's in charge of the present of the, you know, the strategy or whatever. Um, Dawn's a part of her team, but um, Pete brings in Dawn and kind of like wants him to basically be in charge of it because he respects Dawn, you know. Um, and Dawn says something about the plan and that causes Peggy to really question and doubt herself you know she's again she's so used to dawn being in charge and now she's not she's not comfortable yet in her role being in charge of this thing so uh she you know stressing about it all episode and eventually dawn comes in and kind of helps her work through the issue um and they share this really nice moment together when they um uh, they're dancing to the song my way um and it's it's a very touching again they have a very much a father daughter brother sister kind of relationship um and uh yeah he really helps her i think come to come to believe in herself and believe in her idea more um and it's nice to see him in that encouraging role versus being a kind of 
he he wavers at times between being an encouraging person and a very destructive person to her. Um, it, it oftentimes depends on how he's feeling. Um, but he, he's been good to her lately, which is nice to see. Uh, while all this is going on, Pete has this little subplot about um, going to see his daughter. The daughter barely recognizes him anymore. It's It seems like Trudy might be seeing some guy. Um, so he's, of course, having problems there. And his girlfriend, um, uh, the real estate agent, is, is tired of him, too. So, yeah, he, he came in here uh, with, a, with a woman on his side. But he might have no one by the end of it. We'll see. Uh, but that's just a small subplot. Um, another is with uh, Bob Benson. So he he learns from one of the GM executives, who it turns out he's gay too, uh, that they're losing Chevy, but they're going to bring Bob onto Buick. Uh, so obviously this is a big blow to the firm to lose Chevy. Um, and in order to make up for it, they decide to make Harry Crane a partner. Um, which, you know, some people like, uh, uh, Cutler are happy about it. And, you know, it's for business reasons, but other people don't like Harry Crane. And I, and I kind of see why he's kind of a douche, but he, he is a very, like Don points out, he's a very loyal person. Um, so he, you know, he stuck with the company for years and, and really built up their media, uh, business. So, um, it makes sense that they have him as a partner. Uh, to be honest, he makes more sense than Joan from a business perspective, but that's just, you know, how it is. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll see how they handle it. We'll see what, what goes on with um, with Dawn, if he's going to stick around or not. Uh, it's, it's really up for her, you know, interpretation at this point, what they're going to do with him. Um, but, uh, oh, also, yeah, Doug... Or Bob, I mean, proposes to uh, Joan. Um, but she knows he's gay, actually, um, and he's like, you know, we need. I need a wife to be part of this, like as my cover. Um, but we can we can have a good life together, like a good arrangement. But she's like, no, I, I'm looking for love, even if you know, I, even if I never find it, I still would rather be looking for that than some kind of arrangement. Um, which I, I think is really nice to see that. I like that she's. She's grown a lot from her, from what we saw her in season one, where she was very much just concerned with finding a husband and finding this perfect life. Um, and I think because of her experiences with Greg, she knows that it's not worth it to try to like force yourself into this picture perfect life that's underneath the surface is not uh, good. You know, not that Doug is a bad person. He seems like a very good person, but it's just, it's not going to work out for either of them to kind of try to force themselves into this um, situation. Now with Doug, I mean, with the times that they live in, you know, he's not free to pursue that kind of life uh, if he wants to, you know, be in this business. Um, but he, even still, it's like, it, it wouldn't work out for either of them to really you know, pretend. And I, and I like to see that she's grown from, from her experiences on the show to what seems like a much more mature person. Um, yeah, she still has her, her little things that are a problem here and there, but, um, she's definitely, a, she's grown a lot, um, over the course of the series as have many of these characters, not all of them. <laughs> Some of them like, uh, like Roger is still very much immature, but, um, uh, it's nice to see that with Joan and Peggy too has grown a lot. But, uh, yeah, that's it for this episode. Um, might get through one more tonight. We'll see. But uh, I'll leave it at that. And uh, thank you guys for watching. All right. Back with uh, my reaction to the next episode. Um, this one is... I forgot what it was called, actually. But this is a very, um, again, an important episode in terms of, uh, you know, changing times at uh, Sterling Cooper. So... Um, this episode takes place, it's not one of those historic episodes that takes place around a, a famous historical event. This time it's the moon landing. So, uh, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, um, and Michael, uh, unfortunately forgetting his name. He's, he's always the one people forget. Um, but, uh, maybe I'll even look it up just so I can say it. Cause I feel like it is, um, you know, a little disrespectful not to uh no michael michael collins yeah michael collins yeah that's what it was 
Um, and there's also a Gene Seaman here. I'm not sure where he fits in, but regardless, um, I was just saying that like people always forget the third one's name, um, and you know he was part of that mission too. Uh, but um, so all while while this episode's happening, all the characters are like watching um, the uh moon landing and it affects them all in different ways um you know it's a very historic occasion uh while all this is going on don gets informed that he's going to be forced out of the company for breach of contract because he went and, and met with um uh general commander cigarettes whatever it was um again i don't know if if this hadn't happened how they would have forced don out i think they maybe we just made him not show up to work or whatever and he didn't he didn't want that either but he's basically he's he's informed that like he's only has one vote right to save him from getting out because pete and roger both vote for him to stay in excuse me um joan wants him out because she he cost joan a million dollars um and uh cutler obviously wants him out and so does ted chaw um but uh, Bert Cooper decides, you know, he needs to stick with his people and he wants them out. Um, or he wants, you know, he wants, you know, Dawn out, but he votes to keep him in. Uh, but unfortunately, he passes away this episode. And like, man, what a blow in terms of like, uh, he was like, he's been there from the very beginning, even though he's been, you know, largely a background character, not super active in like the plot or anything. Um you know, he was like the old man of the office where it's like he, he was it was just it was important to have him there. So to have him you know, die um, is a real blow. And it also means they don't have the votes to keep Dawn anymore. So he gives Pe Peggy um, the responsibility of presenting because he's like, if I present and I win it and then I get kicked out, there's nothing. But if you win it, it's yours forever. So um, I like to see that he put Peggy first and we're re he's rewarded for it because she presents very well um wins the client at the end and I think he's he's earned her love and affection um but it turns out that Roger has a plan he's going to sell the company to McCann which was this big huge advertising firm they're going to be a small subsidiary of McCann um and uh, it, it makes sense from their perspective again it's the same thing that happened with um the British company before. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's good for them to, to have that there, uh, to protect Dawn. Um, although there'll probably be some changes coming. Um, it's funny cause Ted Shaw has been wanting to quit. He's just been, uh, not been doing well out there in California. Um, but you know, he ends up staying on for this, uh, cause they want him. So maybe we'll see. I feel like Ted, Ted has kind of stopped being interesting ever since he met up with Peggy. <laughs> He's become kind of one note, uh, but maybe they'll do something interesting with him. Um, Cutler, uh, you know, he's he's just whatever. Uh, but, yeah, we'll see how the others deal with it. They're all going to get a lot of money. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. Um, the, the ending of the episode also had a very interesting sequence. It had Burt Cooper singing uh, The Best Things in Life Are Free. Kind of weird. It comes out of nowhere, and it's like Don. Don's not tripping or anything, so it doesn't really make sense why we're seeing this. Um, it's just, I guess, a symbol of his grief. Um, it's a cool sequence, and it's, it's, it's thematic of what they do, right? Because they're in advertising. They sell stuff for, for a price. Um, and... Yeah, you know, but but one of the deeper messages of the show was always that you know the best things in life are free, like love, family, all, all this kind of stuff that they keep ignoring for money, uh, and so I, I think it was nice that Bert went out on that message, and I think it was a nice um, gesture to him to uh, you know give him this kind of send off with respect. Um, but we'll see how things change next episode. Um, God damn it. Every time I watch one of these, I'm like, I want to watch the next one. But it's getting really late. And I'm going to stop at this time. But tomorrow, I will check out the next one. I'm going to binge watch probably the whole thing. Um, and I'll report back. So uh, anyway, thank you guys for watching. And stay tuned for the next one. Coming soon. Hey, what's up, everyone? Back with another reaction. Um, just watched the 
eighth episode of season seven, Severance. Now, we pick up um, after the acquisition by McCann. Um, so they've taken over the company and saved Don's job. Um, and it seems like things have gotten back to the usual rhythm. Like, I, Don's back in his old office. Uh, Lou Avery is gone. Um, Don seems to be writing his department again, um, which is good. It, it seems like a, a good chunk of time has passed because um, a lot of the guys have mustaches now, just like me. Um, so I've been, uh, I need to shave... It's been a little while, but, um, so yeah, so everything's back to normal. Um, they're dealing with some stuff at work. Uh, although this one actually isn't really a work focused episode. Like they have Topaz pantyhose and they have some problems and the McCann guys are very like, like uh, it's, it's such a big company that they're not, they're like kind of like jerks, bullies, you know, sexist pigs, you know, they're just not great guys there, um, which kind of infuriates Joan that she's been, like, disrespected like this by these men. Um, it also infuriates Ken because he used to work at McCann before coming over to um, uh, Sterling Cooper. So the McCann guys hate him uh, for leaving, so uh, they decide to fire him. Um, and they offer him some money if he'll help make sure the accounts, like, stay at the company rather than leaving with him so uh this this works out pretty good for ken because he was actually debating quitting and, and going to write um you know his his novel you know he's a, he's a writer he wants to he doesn't want to do advertisement really anymore and it turns out he did lose the eye which i was like oh damn um but uh yeah he he doesn't really want to do it anymore his wife wants him to quit um and this is a perfect opportunity to do so um However, at the end of the episode, he decides uh, he's instead going to take a job with uh, Dow Chemical as their head of um, advertising. And instead of just firing, like, you know, Sterling Cooper for letting him go, uh, he decides he is going to be the client now. So they have to basically please him, um, which is a very funny uh, change of events. But it's, it's good to see because I, I like Ken um i think he's a great guy um and uh, it's nice to see him get a get a nice happy ending here for the most part we'll see what happens later episodes but um although i i do i do gotta say man i was like you should probably just go write your book like this is what makes you happy you've got a bunch of money uh why bother suffering through this anymore um something i think about all the time too is like man i would love to just not have a day job and uh, just commit to my passions like this kind of stuff so um that would be awesome but uh i think i think like all the characters he does like being there he likes being in the arena and fighting um it's engaging for him so i think uh, i think he'll do fine um but while this is going on too uh peggy goes on a date with um one of her underlings from the other company who's now working there sets her up with his brother-in-law um, and they end up having a good time. Peggy kind of lets loose a little bit. They think they decide they're going to go to Paris like that very night. Um, and I love um, impulsive stuff like that where we just like just get in a plane and, and like go. Um, I, I haven't done exactly that, but uh, it's it's always fun when it's those moments where you like let loose. or you're just like, fuck it. Why not? Why? Why are you always telling yourself? No, like just do this crazy thing. Like, who cares? I like, I mean, if you're in a position where you have the money or whatever and you're not, you know, struggling, but um, to just do something crazy and free-spirited as that, um, it's nice, especially when the normal normal everyday life is so monotonous, it's so draining, um, it's nice to, to, to do something. I've definitely thought about, like, just getting on a plane, like, in the middle of the night and just going, you know? Um, but uh, they don't end up actually going, but it seems like this might be a new relationship for her. And it's good because, um, you know, she tried to make it work with that hippie beatnik guy. It's not her, but this guy's the lawyer. So it kind of seems like they're more on like the same page. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Although we're in the final season, so if she's going to have a relationship. It's got to start to happen now. So um, this might be the guy for her uh, or, or she might be alone. You know, not every woman has to have a husband. Right. <laughs> but I, I think I don't know. I feel like we should see Peggy eventually have a family like 
she doesn't have to choose she doesn't have to give up her career but i think she is looking for love and 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 that kind of stuff like all the characters are so um maybe maybe this is the guy we'll we'll see um but we also have a storyline with dawn so he he's at this diner and he sees this woman who looks familiar to him and i guess she reminds him of um rachel katz who was the department store woman from season one who don had the affair with for a while um it was actually one of the first affairs he had besides i think the artist so um yeah to see to to be reminded of her after all this time when he's getting a divorce again um it, it reminds him of, of that woman who he, he shared this very special time with and he's like uh you know Look, looking for her again um he finds out she actually died th that very week um which is like spooky coincidence but um you know it's it's interesting and it's also you know again he's looking for something now that he's not with megan anymore um he's looking to on back back at times like that which were very fond for him um so he he doesn't end up finding anything specifically like he ends up having sex with this waitress or whatever but beyond just that um you know he i think he's looking for a connection like a like a real meaningful connection like he had with her um and he doesn't really get it with this waitress or anything because like she says i'm not that girl um uh, i don't is it just me or is it i don't think she looked like her either um but maybe it's just in Dawn's head, but um to me to be honest, I thought she kind of looked like that woman from the airline that he met before. Um she looked more familiar to me, but I don't know. Re regardless, um it, it's Dawn searching for something, and I think we'll have to see if he <laughs> if he finds it in these last few episodes here. But we're officially in the final stretch, I think, of episodes. I don't think I wonder how many there are this season. Um uh there's 14 okay so there's one extra one so we have officially passed the halfway point of season seven um we'll be wrapping it up here and uh it's gonna be sad to say goodbye but i am really interested to see where they go with this so um i'll watch more episodes here and talk to you guys then all right just watch the uh ninth episode i believe of season seven uh new business uh and my stupid fucking camera again keeps doing this um, but, uh, in this episode, we have Don and Megan, uh, finalizing their divorce. Um, you know, they, they, they both known it's been coming for some time. Um, and they agree to hand off the furniture and for Don to, you know, settle the money issue. Um, it's funny when, when they get there, Don lets her go through the apartment by herself and get whatever she wants um with the idea that she's only going to take a few things but uh she leaves her mom alone and her mom ends up taking all of the stuff uh because <laughs> she's like you know she's upset about her daughter or whatever uh and then she ends up calling roger sterling to come bring some money <laughs> so he ends up coming and banging her too um and then megan walks in and sees that which it, it's just this really funny turn of events that um you know is a little uh tragic that she's seeing her parents this way but i think she's just her kind of her wits end um she's also with harry um for a lunch meeting about a possible agent but he's just using the opportunity to like sleep with her um and she refuses uh you know it's funny because i said that harry crane was one of my favorite uh of the of the whatever they were originally the account people um you know pete campbell ken cosgrove paul kinsley all these guys right he was my favorite uh he seemed like the nice guy of the group but slowly over the course of the series he's just become like more and more of a douche um and i feel like that's probably because of the hollywood stuff you know he's just become um just a uh you know just a piece of shit <laughs> so um, it is funny to to see that happen um and he ends up going to dawn afterwards like and being like i don't know what megan's gonna tell you but she's 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 lying you know and, like dawn could totally see what he tried to do um but yeah harry crane 
my god are we are we ever gonna get like a resolution to him like is he gonna get some kind of comeuppance in this life um but uh we'll have, we'll have to see um meanwhile though at the same time dawn is seeing this waitress it was the waitress from last episode um and he he tries to strike up a relationship with her um she's going through her own kind of pain and problems uh and it's it's a weird setup because i'm like why why are you trying to do this with this waitress but i think in some way he's trying to like make up for what he did with megan um and like he's he's found this woman who's obviously you know in pain and is suffering and i think he thinks in his mind like if i can help this woman you know i like it alleviates his guilt of how, what he feels with megan um and at the end of the episode it, it was a weird setup like i wasn't super into it like the woman like she was interesting but it wasn't like that developed for me it just kind of happened um and she breaks up with him kind of you know in a way that i was just like yeah i'm like i don't know about this the storyline didn't really work for me that much I, I get what they were going for but it just didn't like click um but speaking of megan dawn gives her a million dollars to make her be feel better um and you know, I, I I do, I'm torn on how to feel about Megan, right? Because on the one hand, I agree with her, right? When we saw her, she was so loving to him, so like open hearted, so kind and sweet. Um, and Dawn, through his selfishness, um, just kind of like destroyed that. Um, he kind of ruined this girl. But part of that is not necessarily just him. It's like it's like life. Like they, they, the the sister even says that New York poisoned their family, um, because it is a place where people do whatever it takes to get ahead. Like you can't necessarily be this kind of doe-eyed girl in this industry. Um, and again, that's not that's not blaming her for like any of these creeps or anything that she deals with, but. Um, I feel like her loss of innocence was not entirely Dawn's fault. It was just, it's society, right? It's like, she's seeing that like the people she's interacting with, like the, the, the people who are writing her soap opera before, um, you know, it's, it's like everyone has an agenda and she, she's realizing that. Um, and I think she blames Dawn in, in some ways for that when it's, it's not his fault. Now he's absolutely a piece of shit, right? And I was going to talk about that a little bit um, in the sense that I, 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 I noticed an interesting connection, right, to when I think of The Sopranos um, and I think of Matt Weiner, what, the most recognizable episode to me he wrote um, was Chasing It. He also wrote The Test Stream, of course, but I can't remember if The Test Stream was co-written by... Um, yeah, David Chase and Matt, Matt Weiner both wrote that uh, the task stream, but uh, Matt Weiner, one, I, I think, a hundred percent wrote um, "Chasing It." Uh, now, "Chasing It" of the Sopranos episode spoilers, I guess, if you haven't seen the Sopranos, but um, that's when Tony is portrayed as like a degenerate, like gambler. He's portrayed in a very bad light that some characters felt was were was uncharacteristic for what we've seen of Tony up up until that point in the series. And I felt a little bit the same way about Don Draper in last last season, season six, and a little bit of season seven. Um, it felt like we're seeing his decline, but it's like almost a little bit too much. Um, it, a lot of season six felt like he was uncharacteristically selfish and um, weird sexually, like the whole thing with um, that woman, Sylvia. Now, again, they explained it a little bit, right? I think with his backstory and with Megan acting and all this kind of stuff. But to me, I felt a little bit uncomfortable watching Dawn uh, this season just because he he's so... Um, he's so, like, degenerately, like, uh, awful. Uh, it felt like it's, it's coming a little out of nowhere. Like... Don has been awful since the first season, but he's been awful in a very specific way that I felt like some of season six and, and season seven has gotten wrong. Like, um, it just, I don't, I don't know. I it just, his, his kind of obsession with some of these women who I don't want to say they're mediocre, but it's just like, 
why are you doing this, Don? But maybe you can make the same argument about like any 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 guy who cheats like like a lot of these celebrities they cheat with like women who are much less attractive than their wives it's just about like the power and in the uh novelty of it um but i'm like don you choose the weirdest women to get obsessed over um but i, I don't know i think i think they were are intentionally trying to make him look bad because again we're it's a drama we're watching don's like decline for the most part um but anyway, I've spoken enough about this episode. I am still really enjoying it. And um, yeah, I'll watch the next episode soon here. So talk to you guys then. All right, back with another reaction. Um, just watch the, what is it? 10th episode of the uh, seventh season. Um, now this is a interesting one. This is a return of um, a character we haven't seen in a while. Well, I guess we've seen him, but... Um, this is the return of Glenn. Um, he comes back. Uh, I don't know if we've seen him this season. I don't think we. Have, I don't think we've seen him this season. But um, he's older now. He's um, eighteen, and he comes over to uh, Sally's house um, and sees uh, Betty there for the first time. Um, and he tells them that he joined the army and he's going to Vietnam. Um, and Sally is obviously upset about her friend going away like that. Um, and she's also upset because she can see that um, her mother, she can see that Glenn is showing some interest in her mother and her mother is appreciating the interest. Um, and then later on, she we'll, we'll talk about the scene with Dawn later on, but um, she, uh, you know, she's upset by that. Um, and then later on, Glenn comes to the house and, and he tries to talk to Betty, um, and you know he's interested in her. He likes her, uh, or you know he's attracted to her. Um, and uh, you know she turns him down, of course. But um, you know it's it's interesting because they had a very profound relationship um, when he was younger. You know it's 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 interesting. He he's a uh, he's Matt Weiner's son in real life, and he's so he's been a part of the show since the very beginning. Um, not the best actor, I will, I'll admit that. Like, Sally is a much better child actor than he is. Um, he got there because he's Matt Weiner's son. But um, it's it's been interesting to see him grow up on the show. There, there's a touch of, like, um, how should I put this? Like, like family. There's a family vibe to the show, having him there. And obviously, Matt is his father. Um, but regardless, uh, he... He, yeah, he confesses the feelings, um, and yeah, they had a profound moment when he was a child that I think that shaped him and also shaped Betty. Because remember, I, one of the most powerful scenes of the series was when she was talking to him in the car because she had no one else to talk to, and it was it was very sad and I I think very powerful and probably formative for him too. You know, he took her hair. Um, he's a uh, he, he, you know he's grown up it's a, he's a child of the of the time um but it's uh you know it's interesting to see that at the same time we've got dawn thinking about the future um he's supposed to write a speech for uh i guess for like what what the firm's gonna look like in the future and he he doesn't know exactly what it's gonna be or what he wants he talks to ted about it he talks to peggy uh, Peggy can actually articulate some very specific things. Ted just wants bigger accounts. Um, but I think Don wants something else. And I think it's interesting because we see a scene with him and Sally, right? Where one of her friends is really flirting with Don. Um, and, uh, you know, he Sally's mad at him because she knows he cheated on Megan and, and you know, all this stuff. So, uh, but he talks to her and he's like, you know, you are like me and your mother, like, uh, like it or not, that's who you are. And it's up to you to make something of yourself in this world. Um, I thought it was a good scene. I feel like, you know, maybe it could have been a little bit more like you could have had a moment where he's, I mean, they're probably saving it for later in the season, but you could have had a moment where he's like, Hey, like, I know I fucked up, right? I know I'm not been the best father to you, but, um, but they'll probably he'll probably talk about that later or in the finale who knows um but they they need a, a resolution to the conflict between the two of them um uh what was else i was gonna say there's this sub conflict with one of the uh 
creative guys gets fired. Um, it's it's kind of funny. It's not a big deal either way, though. Um, but the yeah, the I was also a little disappointed by the ending. I thought that um, Don sells his apartment, and I I get the kind of profound thing that they were going for, which is like he now he's lost this thing too that he was familiar to him. But I was like, you know, what would have been cool if maybe he maybe he wrote the speech and we get a voiceover of him t- like saying the speech or whatever as the episode ends. I thought that would have been cool. They'll probably do the speech next episode. Um, but uh, yeah, overall, good episode. Interesting. Um, I felt it could have been a little bit better. Could have been a little bit more punchy. Um, but overall, we got some good character stuff going on. And um, yeah, I think I'll just leave it at that and probably watch another episode. So uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one right now. What's up, everyone? Uh, back with another reaction. Um, just watched the 11th episode of Season 7, um, Time and Life. Now, that that name, Time and Life, is a reference to the fact that uh, they're in the Time Life building um, in New York, uh, which is a, an important plot point of this episode. But um, it's also, I think, um, meanings like the time of your life. Uh, because, and I just realized uh, Season... Seven is divided into two parts, um, at least according to uh, Wikipedia that I see right here. Um, yeah, it's split into two seven-episode parts. The first part was titled The Beginning, and the second part was titled um, The End of an Era. Um, so we're we're meant to be seeing a kind of decline happening, um, which is very interesting. I didn't know I didn't notice that when I was just watching them back to back. Um, but in this episode, they uh, learn that McCann Erickson uh, is absorbing them into their company. So um, they're going to uh, move them over to their building. They're going to consolidate everything into one operation. Um, now, there there's an effort by them to uh, cr- like stay independent. So um, they're pitching that uh, they go to California. Um, and operate their um, because there's some businesses they're gonna have to get rid of um, for conflict reasons like you can't represent like you know two sodas or something together because it's like helping one hurts the other right Um, so they pitch that like hey you take all the business you want we'll take like whatever's left over and go run it in California still underneath you um but uh, they they say no to that. Basically, they want the and they they make it seem like, hey, no, we're bringing you in here. We're gonna make you like, you're gonna be running some big projects here for us. Um, but uh, they're obviously not everyone's happy about this. Some of them are. Um, Ted Ted apparently got divorced and he has a new girl, uh, so he's happy to be in New York. Um, certainly, some of them were promised like big projects. They said that Don's gonna run Coca Cola, which is like. That's like the kingpin of advertisements, right? In America, you can't think of a brand that's more iconic than um, than than Coca Cola, right? The the advertisements, the bear with the uh, with the Coke. Um, so maybe Donald will invent that. Uh, who knows? Maybe he invented the bear. <laughs> but um, basically, they're 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 promised some big stuff, but some of them are worried that like they're they're going to be marginalized and maybe even fired there, like Joan. Like where does she fit in with that those sexist you know pigs, so uh, we'll we'll see what happens. Um, uh, at the end of the episode, there's this great scene where um, they're telling everyone of what happened, and they just the employees are just talking amongst themselves and go off like they can't control them anymore. Um, and it's it, it goes along with that theme of like the end of an era, right? It's like. These people have been through so much. They're like, they're not on board anymore. They're just like, oh my God, what's going to happen to us? Um, and it's a very sad way to end the episode, but um, it does make sense for thematically what's going on here. Uh, meanwhile, we also get a storyline with um, uh, Pete and Trudy. Uh, their daughter is not getting into uh, this very private school that um, the Campbell family has gone to for many years. Um, and it, it turns out the admissions person or whatever, um, like, okay, so there's, like, this conflict between the, uh, the Scottish families, I think, like, um, 
uh, McDonald uh, and Campbell were. It's I, I do know a little bit about that history. It's the uh, the Scots. Um, they they brought them into uh, their house to stay the night, and then they murdered their host on orders of the king. Uh, it was actually what inspired the um, uh, the Red Wedding in Game of Thrones. It was the uh, uh, the massacre of the McDonald family. I think there's actually a song about it. Like this pop song was really funny to listen to because it's very cheery, but it's about murder. Um, but uh, regardless about that, that's that's just why. Um, but it ends up with um, Trudy and Pete kind of reuniting a little bit. Like um, you know, they've been divorced. Or, for a while now but you know i i think trudy's still like oh that's still you know he's there there are some qualities about pete that kind of sneak up on you sometimes that he you know he he is a piece of shit for a lot of the series like he's been selfish and asshole um but surprisingly there's this like characterization of him where he's you know just very like heroic almost like when the shit hits the fan, he's right there alongside them too. So, um, I, I've come to really like Pete. He's he's obviously pathetic in so many ways, but you you compare him to someone like Harry Crane. Now it's like, wow, he's actually Pete's actually like likable in his own shitty kind of way. Um, I don't know. They 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 made him a very nuanced character. I like him a lot, um, and I think he and Trudy get back together. And I'm like, come on. It's Annie Edison. <laughs> it's Allison Brie. Come on here. Just get back with her. <laughs> oh, my God. So, um, anyway, regardless, uh, this is um, the end of an era, so to speak. We'll see how they deal with it next. If next episode, they'll probably be at McCann. We'll see who's still around. Um, I also want to say, you know who's really cute? Uh, Meredith, uh, Don's secretary. Like, not, not in the way that, like, Megan was. Not, like, sexy, but just, like... Like, she's just, like, a precocious little girl. Uh, I like that she's, like, so forward with, forward with Dawn sometimes, where she kissed him and stuff. Um, and she's like, no, tell me what's going on here. Like, she's, like, she's funny. She's a funny girl. Um, she's not used a whole lot, but um, I like her. Like, she's, she's precocious <laughs> in her way. She reminds me a little bit of Sally, too. Like, she's a little just, like, you know, feisty, a little independent. Um, it's good. Uh, but regardless, that is the episode. Thank you guys for watching, and stay tuned for the next one. Coming right up. Hey, what's up, everyone? Back with the uh, next uh, reaction. And uh, this episode is Lost Horizon. So um, we pick up after the acquisition um, at McCann Erickson. And everyone is getting used to the new environment, right? Everyone's on different floors. They're at a huge company now. Um, things are changing. Um, and, you know, it makes some of them uncomfortable that they feel they're being marginalized. They feel like, like Don in particular feels like he's just a cog in a machine now. He feels like he was lied to because McCann was like, oh, we're going to make you in charge of all of our stuff. But he's just one creative director among a sea of others. Um, so he just up and leaves during one of them. Um, I I don't think they'll fire him just because, you know, they spent all this money to get him. They need to get something from that return. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a problem. And in this episode in particular, Joan has a big problem. You know, she's not being taken seriously by her peers. Um, they're very sexist over there. Um, she turns to this one guy, but he turns out to be a total creep who's like, we're going to sleep together or, you know, I'm not going to support you in any way. So uh, she goes to the boss who um, is the one who bought the company, right? Uh, I don't know if he's McCann himself or Erickson or what, what, what it is, but um he's he's one of them and uh he's like i don't want you to work like, she confronts him about all this shit and he's like i'll make you a deal i'll give you half of the money you're owed and you get out of here or or you know you get nothing um and then she's like well if you try to get rid of me i'm gonna go file a complaint with the uh equal opportunity employment act and uh, go to some journalists, and there's this there's this tense standoff. Um, eventually, though, 
um, why am I Roger Sterling? I blanked right there. Sorry. Uh, eventually, he comes in though and is like, "Hey, you need to take this fifty percent of the money um, because, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna fuck you over here." Um, so it's sad to see Joan leave. I mean, she was forced out. I mean, it's nice that she has her money. It's a lot of money, right? I mean, you got to think of like she was owed like a million dollars. That's the equivalent of like ten million dollars in today's money. So. If she's going to get like 750, 50, you know, half a million or whatever, that's still like close to five million dollars. a lot. Um, now, obviously, it's not what she she deserves much more than that. Um, but, you know, she's still walking away with something and she's maybe will hopefully have time for that new man in her life. Um, we'll see. But um, yeah, it's that I think I think we're going to see more and more like attrition as it goes on, like. These people are not going to be happy to work here. We have Peggy in this episode kind of bonding with Roger for a while as they say goodbye to their old office. Um, and she walks in like a boss at the end with a cigarette in her mouth. I've seen that shot before um, of her just walking down the hallway carrying that fucking like octopus uh, picture that Bert uh, Cooper or uh, Roger gave her. Um, and uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's pretty wild. She, I think she'll do well there. Um, meanwhile, though, Don goes to, like, Pennsylvania or Wisconsin. No, he goes to Wisconsin, actually, uh, to see to see what happened with that waitress. What the fuck is up with this waitress? Why is he so obsessed with this, like, just random woman? Um, I don't know. It's a distraction for him. I think he... Uh, you know, is he's not happy at his work, so he's looking for something to do. And helping this woman is, I guess, his distraction. But um, I guess from we, we hear from the husband that, like, other men have come looking for her. Like, she's left this trail of destruction around. So it's like, damn, what's going on here? Um, but I don't know. I feel like Don... Maybe it was also because he went and saw Peggy. And, or not Peggy, Betty. Um, and that kind of reminded him of like his original love. So I don't know. It's, it's a, it's a weird storyline. Um, but he's, he's still going to, at the end, he's like going to, um, St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, so he's going in the complete wrong direction. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. If he's just going to get fired from there, if he's going to quit. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, what else here? I feel like that's pretty much everything. Um, there, there doesn't. I mean, it, like I said, it's a, it's a, a sad moment. Like Joan's gone, other people are gonna go. Um, it's definitely a time of change. You know, Roger doesn't know what his place is, but we only have, I think, uh, maybe three more episodes here. Um, Thirteen or two more, actually, right? Uh, two more episodes to wrap everything up. Um. We'll see how it goes, but man, I just, I can't wait to watch those. I'll probably finish them tonight, so uh, I'm, I'm going to go watch those and talk to you right now. All right, just finished the penultimate episode of the series, um, the honey, the, the milk and honey route, um, something like that. Uh, but uh, man, we are really coming on the end here. Um, not, I mean... It doesn't feel like the end is coming. I mean, it does to an extent, but, um, you know, where something like The Sopranos or well, I guess The Wire also didn't necessarily feel like the end. Um, but I'm thinking of something like The Sopranos, right, where it's like we could really tell the end was coming. Here, it's this feels like it could be an episode that fits anywhere into the series, which I, I, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Um but Don's on a road trip. He's quit his job, so he's he's out. Um, they uh, he just he just left and never came back. Um, really, uh, really baller. Um, sorry, hold on, my computer shot off for a second. Um, so yeah, so he left and he's uh, going across the country. Um, I don't know where he's going. Maybe California. Um, but uh, he stops in this one horse town. Um, he stays there while his car is getting fixed, and um, 
he ends up going to a uh, Legion Hall, uh, like it, like the American Legion, like Veterans Association, and uh, they're, they're doing a fundraiser for one of their people. And uh, Don joins them, and he ends up sharing his story in Korea um, about what happened to him there. It's the first time he's told anyone since like Megan, and uh, you know it's a bonding experience for him. He feels kind of you know, at peace with some of these veterans. Um, but then the money gets stolen from the fundraiser and they think it's him. So they beat him up. Uh, but it turns out it's the, uh, it's uh, like this, I don't know what he is, an, an assistant there, a maid or whatever. Um, he, he's a con man there. Um, and he took the money and uh, Don gets the money back and gives it back and then leaves. And he takes the kid with him and, um, and then when they reach the bus stop where he was going to drop him off at, he gives him the keys to the to the Cadillac. So I think he sees himself in this kid, you know, someone who like a small town kid who, you know, made the wrong decision, just like Don did um, to try to run away from his identity and, and try to forge a new life for himself with wealth. But Don's realized that that's not worth anything. Right. Uh, Don's got more money than he knows what to do with and he's unhappy that's why he's giving it away on 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 the route out here um so yeah i think it's an interesting episode like i said very for like it's all about don's character uh but it felt like it could fit anywhere into this series like it didn't necessarily feel like damn the next episode is the finale you know um meanwhile at, at mccann we actually don't even get a view of anyone else at McCann besides from Pete, uh, surprisingly. So Pete's doing really, really well there. Um, he, he meets with duck Phillips, uh, who wants to get him a job with this company on Wichita, like this private airline company. Um, and at first he doesn't want to do it, but he realizes that, you know, succeeding at, at the McCann Erickson's not what he wants. You know, he wants to be back with his family um, he approaches Trudy and um, tells her he wants to get back together and they can all move together to Wichita. Um, and she agrees. Um, and I don't know. We'll see what happens next episode. And maybe it'll it'll mess it up. But um, I felt a little lackluster that Trudy... I mean, maybe that's her character. But like it, it felt like she's never really been angry at him for the affair. Just more like disappointed in him. But we don't get something like Betty or Megan or whatever where it's like the pain felt real to them. Um, Trudy's just like, I am going to divorce you, but oh, I'll still be happy whenever you come around the house. Like, um, And maybe that's just her character. Maybe she's like one of those waspy people who never, you know, shows pain. But um, I felt like she forgave him too easy. Like, yes, he did. He was like, I'm sorry. But... Um, it felt like more he was like happy that like I realized that you're important to me versus like I'm so sorry please like forgive me and we can get back together I felt like that's a more believable interaction now maybe we'll see that next episode maybe something will go wrong and he'll have to confront his behavior um, but it just felt a little bit too easy the way he's just slid back into his old life um but again, maybe that's maybe that's just what they're going for. Maybe it was all just about realizing what's important, which is family. I mean, that's I think what the biggest thing about this show is is uh, it's just realizing that lesson that the material world, wealth, all this kind of stuff, it's that's not what makes you happy. Again, it's funny, like it's like what Bert says before: the best things in life are free. That song he sings uh, when when Don imagines him after he's dead. Speaking of which, we also learned that Betty is dying of cancer. Um, she's terminal. Um, and, uh, you know, her daughter is obviously very saddened by this. Henry's sad as well. Um, and she, they want her to do chemo and fight, but she says no. Um, she's she's accepted her death um, and is just going to make the best out of her life moving forward. I, I felt like her letter to um, Sally could have been a little bit more eloquent, like... He does fit with Betty's character a little bit that she's not very emotional. She's all about just appearances. 
Um, and it's just it's instructions for her funeral. And she gets a little bit of message there for Sally where it's like, I'm not worried about you anymore. You you march to the beat of your own drum. But um, I don't know. I felt like it could have been a little bit more, a little bit more punchy. Uh, but again, maybe that just fits with her character, and I'm, I'm not analyzing that right. Um, but oh my god, last episode. I'm gonna watch it right now, and um, yeah, we'll see. Oh man, it's gonna be tough to say goodbye to this show. It's it's been a great ride. Um, just just a wonderful experience watching it. Um, but I'll I'll watch it next. And report back what we're gonna see. Um, well, ha- I'll have a lot of thoughts about the the show as a whole. So uh, I'll leave it there. Talk to you guys in a minute. Well, damn, here we are. Um, just finished the uh, final episode of the c- c- series, um, episode fourteen, person to person. Now that title um is very symbolic. Um you know, it, refer, it refers to like collect calls that people make. Um and it, it also refers to I think the concept of the show of like genuine human connections over materialism. Um God damn, I don't know what to say about this finale. Um in some ways I was very moved by it. Um, in some ways, I don't think I quite understood it. In some ways, I was insanely disappointed with it. Um, and in some ways, I was very happy and satisfied with it. I wonder if that's the message. Um, there's something in there about life in general. Um, and happiness that... I, I don't know. I'm feeling all those things right now. And I, I don't know. Every time though, I think of like a show being intentionally disappointing that that rings kind of hollow for me. I'm like, um, you know, it's bad on purpose. Uh, not that this episode is bad by any means, but I, you know, it's, it's, they don't tie up a lot of like almost nothing gets tied up in this finale. Um, they set up some things, uh, like you know like character's future uh peggy and um what's his name stan get together that's good they 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 belong together they've been you know they've been too much you know they've been in love for a while um so that's cool to see that uh you know at the end here uh, we we get a we get a montage of all the characters right um not all of them no megan uh but um they uh we get a montage of like Sally doing the dishes uh for uh Betty cuz she's sick um we get uh a shot of Joan with her new business they they break up her and the boyfriend for no I I don't know okay let me let me get through what I don't like about this cuz that's kind of what's flowing to the top of my mind it felt like we were we are setting things up that are not going to come right um we see Joan break up with her boyfriend to start her new business, but it's a business that came into being in this episode. Like, like her storyline this season was not necessarily like her learning that she doesn't need a man and she needs professional satisfaction. Um, that's like almost the opposite of what Peggy learned. Um, but you know what I'm saying? They didn't like this, like her being in that business, but losing her boyfriend that doesn't feel like a natural conclusion of her story arc to me to like, it felt like something that popped up this season and just kind of pittered out versus um, like landing that character right where she needed to be. Um, Now you could say that, yeah, Joan's character was um, like, she had prioritized like relationships and being a wife over business right before um, and so to her to end up owning her own business is interesting, but the problem is one that that business has only started to develop in this episode. So we don't have any kind of ties to it. It's a production company, which has nothing to do with what she did at Sterling Cooper. Um, and you know, like the whole, her and Roger, they touch on it, right? That he's going to support her new business, but I'm like, 
if anything, Joan and Roger was a storyline that could have been tied up neatly. Not that they had to end up together, but they don't, they don't even, I don't know. They don't even try. Um, they don't even really come to a deep, it doesn't feel like they came to a deep understanding where it was like, you know, Hey, I, I've been a child my whole life, but now I'm ready to take responsibility for this kid and, and be a part of the kid's life and help out. Like, He's just like, yeah, I'm putting him in my will. And then he fucks off with Megan's mom, who somehow Megan's mom is in the finale, but Megan isn't. Um, Like, I just, like, you get what I'm saying? It feels like they're almost setting up more episodes that are not going to... I don't know. Did season seven maybe... Did they not think that that would be the ending? Did they think they would continue on? Um, I've not read anything about this, so I have no idea what the uh, popular perception of the episode is. Um, I don't know if people are disappointed in it. I don't know if people love it. Um, I think I've heard generally praise for it from like, I've never heard someone be like, oh, the ending to Mad Men was so bad. Um, but maybe, maybe the people think that, I don't know, but I don't think it's bad. That's, that's the whole point of this. Like there, there is something profound in this, uh, finale. Just, it's just in terms of like story structure, in terms of character arc it's not satisfying in any way because they don't really tie up any storylines, which you could argue throughout the entire show. They've never really done that. Right. It's not, it, it, it's not a necessarily a, like oftentimes a season would end and then the next season would pick up like a year or two later without any regard for the stories and the character arcs that were happening in there. It was more about the general kind of trajectory that Don and a lot of these other characters were on and the choices they were making and what they were prioritizing over or again materialism versus genuine love um that to me is like the biggest theme that stands out from it so you could say that this finale is right on the same kind of uh pace as the rest of the show has been it's 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 the show has generally had a disregard for tight narrative structures it's almost the opposite of Breaking Bad in that regard, which is funny because obviously these are the two shows that made AMC, but whereas Breaking Bad was hyper concerned with its plot and hyper concerned with its, um, with its tight narrative, this show almost doesn't care about that. And instead focuses on like emotions and, and, and stuff like that. So it's not that one is better than the other. It's just interesting. Um, and obviously the biggest storyline in this episode is with Dawn, right? He's, He ends up in this hippie retreat out in California. Um, He doesn't really get a goodbye for any of his uh, loved ones. The only one he gets a goodbye with is kind of Peggy. Um, Funny enough, again, she's always been this kind of adopted daughter. But, you know, he never makes it right with um, Sally. He never... I mean, he's got kind of a decent goodbye with Betty. Um, He... I mean, he he acknowledges that he fucked up everything in his life, but he never gets to say sorry. He doesn't get a goodbye to Bobby or Jean. Um, And maybe that's the point. Don's a shitty father. Um, And he's a shitty person in a way that, like, Tony Soprano or Walter White is not even. Um, It's funny that I'm I'm thinking about this now. This is going to be a a decently long review, by the way. I have a lot of stuff I want to talk about. Um, But it's, it's interesting. It's like... You know, like when I think about awful characters, right, Tony Soprano, Walter White, just these bad, bad men who did bad things and were repulsively ugly. Don in in some and when I say ugly, I meant like ugly in terms of their character, right? Don in some ways, for the most of the series, has not felt that way to me. But now that I'm looking back on him, I'm like, oh, you're disgusting, you're disgusting in a way that I didn't quite know at first. And I still like him. Like, I, I really do. I still like him to an extent. But, like, he, you know what it reminds me of? And this is, I hate doing this because it's like I'm comparing this show to something that came afterwards. But he reminds me of um, True Detective Season 1. Um, uh, fuck, not, not Russ. Not the Matthew McConaughey character. The other one. Uh, the other main detective. I'm blanking on his name right now. I'm sorry. But, um, you know, a man who just did not appreciate his family and just let it all slip through his fingers. And there, there's like a deep existential fear in me as a man when I saw True Detective and I saw that character. Because, I don't know, like Dawn's storyline just gets at like, I think, the apathy 
and the total disregard for a family and, and love and stuff that um, in particular, I think a lot of men um, go through. Um, not to say that women can't relate to Don Draper, but it's just like, man, a man who was always chasing the wrong thing, who looked for the wrong thing. And it was not evil, right? And and had like genuine c- c- empathy and, and love in his heart, but just um, did not apply it in the right places. And especially these last two seasons felt like we saw a sharp, sharp decline. I mean, we, we've seen that throughout the entire show, but um, man, it almost feels like unfair how badly they portray Don Draper um not to say not like in terms of like he's not pathetic like he's still getting laid even in this finale but it's just like man you are a loser like really you've got all this money you've got these great looks but you've got nothing um and i think that's the whole point of of what we're seeing with this character right and um you know this whole thing with stephanie his niece and she's like we're not even family um i think he again he was trying to fix her but what he really needed what he really wanted to do was fix himself, but he just, he just couldn't face himself. He was a coward. Um, and, and the ending sequence where he's, I don't know what to make of this ending sequence. Like he's, he's meditating. And I think, I think the idea is that he comes up with that Coke ad. I, I called it. He was going to invent something for Coke, but, uh, even Peggy brings it up here too. Um, that he, he comes up with the ad for, I want to buy the world a Coke. Now, maybe that's hinting that he's going to go back to McCann and, like, go work on Coca-Cola and invent something like that. But, um, I don't know. Maybe it gets it like, his heart was in advertising. That's what he, he was good at. That's what he was meant to do. Um, maybe that's his piece was, was his work. Um, but, man, like I said, I feel like Don, I feel like this show is, like, Don Draper, it's disappointing. It's sexy, but it's disappointing. Um, and maybe, again, maybe that's what they were going for. I'm feeling stuff as I watch this. It, it is profound, and it's good, and it's bad. It's all those things. And, um, yeah, I mean, uh, probably this is the longest re- episode of review I've given so far, but it, it really is touching all these things in me, but there's problems with it that I, I feel like are genuine problems. Um so god i don't even know i don't even know what to say about this um it's an incredible fucking series like you know the even the wire like i felt like after i watched the finale of the wire i understood it i understood the show mad men in some ways i still don't understand it um i don't understand what all these beats necessarily meant but i feel like that's almost a good thing it feels like life to me um so, I, I mean, I'll, I'll rank this show, like I said, right now, the fourth greatest show I've ever seen. Sopranos, number one. Wire, number two. Breaking Bad. I don't know. Breaking Bad, number three. Some people might not like that. But, um, yeah, god damn. That, this, this show is so interesting. Um, I, I have a new appreciation for Matt Weiner, too. His, his episodes of of the Sopranos. Like I understand his style now from watching this show. And I, those episodes kind of inform what a lot of what I saw in this one too. Um, yeah, it's a show that, that defied any kind of expectations a show that, um, dealt with something so complex, like the wire dealt with complexities of like socioeconomic complexities, but the characters were, were lacking in that show uh, for the most part. This show, the characters take front and center and the complexities of their lives. And God damn, Donald Drake was still someone, I don't know what to think about him. I, I don't know, honestly, what to make of him. Just like the world. Um, but I mean, there's a reason I binge watched the last three seasons, like straight through. Like you, you've seen it in my fucking clothes. Um, as of the time I'm recording this right now, see that I released uh, uh, the the fourth season reaction this week. And as I'm talking right now, I have seasons five done. I've got season six done, and this is going to be season seven. So um, there's that tells you something that I had to watch these all immediately. Um, it's an incredible series. Um, I, I just I'm feeling a lot of emotions right now. 
Um, more so than even The Wire. The Wire was pure enjoyment and pure mental stimulation, but this is like emotional stimulation for me. Um, I feel sad and disappointed and and happy and in love and all these kind of things. Um, so I've been talking for almost 15 minutes now, so I'll leave it at that. But um, my God, what a series. Uh, everyone who worked on this should be insanely proud it's a work of art without a doubt. Um, so uh, thank you guys so much for watching these. Um, it has been a trip to go through it all with you guys. I know I know you like seeing these, my evolution as I learn to like really love a series. So um, we'll do this again uh, for more series. I know all you're going to post in the comments what you want me to do after this. Um, but we'll, we'll watch some more shows eventually and, and we'll go through them because... Goddamn, I started this channel with just The Sopranos, right? Where I was like, oh man, I love this show. And, and I, I had seen Breaking Bad at that point, but you guys have introduced me to so many great works of art that I'm so grateful for. So thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Love your family. Be appreciative of them. And whatever else you do in this world, make sure you buy a Coca-Cola. Because <laughs> cause advertising, man. I honestly, I honestly have went out and bought some stuff some products that they've advertised in this show because I'm a sheep and advertising works on me. So anyway, regardless, thank you. Talk to you soon.